Well, happy fall Sunday to you. Amen. Wow. Some of those times you, you, you kind of you kind of live through July and August in Alabama to get to September and October and November. You do. And for those of you watching down in South Florida, it is wonderful in Alabama right now, okay? And I'm glad we live in a place that has seasons uh, that come and go and we can enjoy different things, but I'm always glad when August the 31st comes um, and walk outside on days like today and you just say to yourself, there is a God and he has blessed us with a beautiful day so hopefully you'll be able to enjoy that and you're off to a great start by being in God's house today and uh, I walked in the house yesterday afternoon for a few minutes and uh, grabbed a snack and I was watching TV and it, it was it was sports overload right I mean you were flipping through channels and there was football and some good games some good some great games until you Tennessee volunteer fans went off the rail last night. I, I, I don't know what happened, but anyway, that, that, that is yet to be determined. But anyway, great football games and a lot of fun. And then you change the channel, and then there's, there's baseball going on, right? I mean, baseball still taking place. And then you change the channel again, and there's some golf taking place, and people playing golf, and the Champions Tour, and the PGA, and different things. Everybody playing golf, and uh, that was, a, that was a kind of fun to watch, and good thing about golf you can go to sleep and wake up any time and you just jump back into it you know it, it, it doesn't matter uh, what what's going on and it's still amazing what those guys and gals can do with a with a golf ball and then the WNBA is on so basketball somehow is still going on and there's there's some of that taking place and and race cars NASCAR is going and it just continues on and uh, here locally we had track and we had band competitions and things going on and uh, it's, it was just just crazy all of the things that were taking place and it was it was just a sports overload and it made your mind and you didn't know what to keep up with and take care of so I went back outside to do some things so um, but just just man if, if you weren't pleased with the sports arena yesterday you just weren't pleased you did I mean if you can't find something going on there but kind of kind of you, you couldn't be a football fan you couldn't be a NASCAR fan. You couldn't be a Braves fan or whatever. You, there, there was just too much wandering around. I love that song we just sang. And, you know, sometimes I, I wonder, God, why did you make me, why did you want me to be a pastor? You know, I mean, I, I had a whole lot of other things I'd rather be than a pastor. Every day I think that. But um, <laughs> so, sometimes I wonder if God doesn't just whisper in my ear, because, buddy, you would be a reprobate if you were not a pastor. You need to be in the Word every day just to keep you straight, you know. I, I don't know. Because I love that song, Clay, where it says, Lord, prone, prone to wander, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Do y'all ever feel that way? I'm just one step out of being in disobedience. I mean, I, it's just a gift of mine, you know. And, and the things that well up inside of me and the things that I wish I could say that I don't. And, you know, if y'all always asked me does, does, does Lynn ever get tired of you talking about her and saying things about her and I said no Lynn's just thankful for what I don't say because she knows what I'm thinking but uh, what I what I what doesn't come out of my mouth you know but every one of us are just, we're just prone to wander Lord I feel it we're just prone man just, just to leave the one that we love and the one that loves us in our in our lives prone to wander but yet we have the theology that we just follow our heart. That we just do whatever our heart desires for us to do. And we just, we just operate on feelings. And we'll say, well, if you, just, if you want to know what to major in in college, just follow your heart. If you want to know what to do in your marriage or in your relationships, just follow your heart. If you want to know what decisions to make in your employee employment or the business is in, just follow your heart. Some people say, well, let your conscience be your guide. So I want us to look at a couple of passages this morning. We're just going to walk through some trains of thought, some thought processes, and perhaps you can follow it. In Jeremiah, it says, if you want to follow your heart, understand that your heart is deceitful. Your heart is deceitful above all things, and it is beyond a cure. Your heart, my heart, and listen closely. 
that little precious one that you think knows no sin, that little grandchild? No, no. Even them. Now, we've gone from preaching to meddling. I realize that, but it just says the heart is deceitful above all things. And your heart, my heart, is beyond cure. Who can understand it? I, the Lord, search the hearts and examine the mind to reward each person according to their conduct, according to what their deeds deserve. So we have that individual, we have that thought process, well, buddy, just follow your heart. And God says, oh, no. don't follow your heart because I'm going to reward you according to your conduct, according to their deeds of service. So our prayer, God, would you give me a new heart? you put a a new spirit in me and would you remove this heart of stone and give me a heart not not a not a heart of flesh as we think is walking in the world but god give me a heart a heart toward you a heart of flesh a heart that is alive toward the things of god my dad grew up in the coal mines so when he would go into those coal mines my granddaddy had as a little boy, those coal miners would give him cigarettes. And when granddaddy wasn't around, he would smoke those cigarettes. So all of my life, my dad was a smoker. I can remember him sitting in his recliner. In fact, the weird thing, when he passed away, I kept his green ashtray. I still have it. And my sister said, why do you want his ashtray? I said, I don't know. I just remember him, those cigarettes sitting in that green ashtray, Marlboro 100s remember that smoke them time to time myself no i don't um (laughs) just just remember this in there driving down the road crack that window i still like the smell of smoke just passing by now not that stench of smoke i mean like like, but just i thought oh there's my dad i just grew up in that and you said well you experienced secondhand smoke they didn't know about secondhand smoke back then i mean that's just and back then he didn't really know smoking was that bad for you you know Until 48 years old, Daddy had his first heart attack. The doctor says, you're in trouble. He had a heart surgery. Then he had another heart surgery. And I told him, I said, Dad, thank you. Thank you for that genetic pool that you're giving me of this heart surgeries. (laughs) And he was a typical businessman. He had smoked two and a half packs a day sitting at his desk working day to dark and i mean just just doing that deal didn't exercise didn't take care of himself didn't eat right oh he ate right he ate everything inside i mean he just you know but he's just just one of those guys you know but i remember those heart surgeries that he would go through you know that that bypass that heart lung machine you put you on and you got to get off of it you know and all those kind of things i remember those those major milestones of all those heart surgeries and then other difficulties came from that smoking and cholesterol and pressure and stress of his job and, and all of those. And, and boy, but they, would, they would do those heart surgeries and they would give him a, a new heart. And they'd say, now, Mr. Champion, it's time for you to quit smoking. And you've got to go exercise. And you've got to lose weight. You've got to take care of this, this new heart with these new bypasses that you had. And I think he had it two or three times. He had a couple of them. But anyway, you got it, and then angioplasty. I mean, all kind of things. Well, you got to take care of that. And, and we today, you and your, man, we're prone to wander. We're prone to leave the one that we love. Every one of us have that gift. Why? Because we have a, a heart that is beyond cure. And you think, well, that's, that's right. In 2021, this whole world going to hell in the handbasket. I mean, we're just in trouble. No, no, no. Go back to Genesis. Go back to Genesis chapter 6, verse 5. Genesis chapter 6. This isn't like the end of the book of the Bible. I mean, this is the sixth chapter in the very beginning of the Bible. The Lord saw how great man's wickedness on earth had, had become and that every Every inclination of the thoughts of his heart was on evil all the time. What a powerful verse about mankind, about your heart and my heart. Every inclination of his heart was on evil all the time. Now, truth of the matter, as you went through this week, as I went through this week, didn't your heart have an inclination toward evil all the time? Jealousy, greed, anger, every inclination, frustration, arguments, 
You say, well, Pastor, we, we're Christians. We don't have arguments. We have heated discussions. Well, if that makes you feel better, that's okay, but it's an argument, right? Every inclination. In Genesis chapter 8, two chapters later, God has, has started all over, right? I mean, he started the Noah and the flood has come, and he's, he has started all over. And the Lord smelled the pleasing aroma and said to his heart, Never again will I curse the ground because of man. But did you notice that next part? Even though, even though every inclination of his heart is evil from where? Childhood. You don't have to teach a two-year-old to steal that cookie out of the cookie jar. They, they know. They know how to lie. You don't say, now, let me sit you down and teach you how to lie. No, they know how to you, you have chocolate all over the mouth. Have you eaten? No. Mm. I had not had that cupcake. Right? I mean, we, we don't have to. Every inclination of their heart is evil from, from childhood. But God said, even so, I'll never again destroy those living creatures that I've done. Never, I'm not going to do it. Even though their every inclination of their heart is evil. Now, and we tell our students, no, just follow your heart. If you feel like you've, you, 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 you've met the person that you need to marry in your life, just follow your heart. What are you going to do in 10 years when your heart's cold and you're tired of each other and you've got 2.3 children running around and you're broke? How are you going to follow your heart then? Because your heart is going to be stone cold. Right? Amen? You've ever been there? That wasn't a good place for an amen. <laughs> Especially if your spouse is sitting next to you. You can't follow your heart. You follow your commitment then, don't you? Because your feelings come and go, amen? Commitment stays that you're going to stay in this marriage. Good and bad, sickness and in health, till death do us part. That's what we agreed to when we were following our heart. Every inclination. Even in the New Testament, James chapter 1. Therefore, get rid of all moral filth and evil that is so prevalent and humbly accept the word planted in you which can save you. How does that heart become so hardened? Because of sinful decisions. Because of sinful decisions that we make in our lives. That's what moral filth means. Just make decisions that we're prone to wander and we're prone to leave the one that we love. And those evil inclinations come and we make decisions that aren't pleasing to the Lord. And then we have influences outside of our life, the evil that is so prevalent around us. We live in a fallen world. We live in a desperate world and the evil just pounds on us and God says, no, 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 keep your heart in tune with me. Let me give you a heart that's, that's warm with nourishment. It's, it's, uh, the flesh is not hardened. It's not a heart of stone. It's a heart that's alive. And get rid of your personal pride and humbly accept the word of God that is planted in you. Get rid of that personal pride in your life. Mark put it this way. When he's describing our, our lives and our hearts, he says, from within, out of a man's heart, out of man's heart comes evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, lewd, lewdness, envy, slander, arrogance, and folly. If, if, if that's, and all of these things come from inside and make a man unclean. And it just comes from our heart, our hearts that's prone to wander, our hearts that's prone to leave the one that we all love, our heart that's filled with evil from, from our childhood. And we make decisions every day because we're just going to follow our heart. We're just going to follow our conscience. And God says, no, you're following what is evil. You're following what is going to take you off of a cliff. You're following your feelings. And you say, well, well, what do we do? Well, Scripture tells us that our lives are rendered unclean. But let me remind you that there's hope for us. Blessed are those who keep his statutes. And seek him with all their heart. Seek him with all their heart. Blessed is that man. Proverbs says there's a way that seems right to a man. But in the end, it leads to death. 
So we ask ourselves as we, as just as, as, as we lead life as followers of Christ, do we realize that God's ways are not our ways nor his thoughts our thoughts? Do we realize that we can follow our hearts or we can follow the ways of God? Do we follow our conscience and let our conscience be our guide? Or do we follow the things of God and the teachings of God? Because out of a man's heart comes evil and sexual immorality and theft and murder and adultery and on and on and on. Is that what we're going to follow? Is that going to be our guide? Hebrews chapter 4. For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any double-edged sword, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to the dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. And I highlighted this next part. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. The word of God. The teachings in, in, in your Bible that you have turned on that's in your lap today. If you don't have one, there's one in the pew pocket in front of you. Take it, write your name in the front in the, and say, this is my Bible. It's there for you to have. Because the, the, the Bible is, is living and active. It's sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates the dividing soul and spirit and joints and marrows. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of a man's heart. Nothing in all of creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything is uncovered and laid bare before the eyes of him to whom we must give an account. So we ask ourselves, are we, are we living our lives and saying, well, I, I'm just going to follow my heart. I'm just going to think about it. I'm going to pray about it. I'm going to ask other people to pray for me. I'm just going to follow my heart. I'm just going to let my conscience be my guide. Or are we going to pray about it and let God's Word be our guide? The teachings, the principles, the precepts of God's Word, is that going to be our guide? Because God's ways are not our ways, nor His thoughts our thoughts. And the Bible says that we, we must give an account. We must give an account by following our heart and letting our conscience be our guide or following his word and the teachings of his word. You say, well, I don't know the teachings of his word. Bingo. That's why we spend time in it every day. That's why we're studying it. That's why we're in church. That's why we're in small groups. That's why we go to Bible study so that we might know his ways. Because you're going to give an account on your life. I'm going to give an account on my life. And my life, the Bible says, buddy, you are prone to evil. From your childhood, buddy, you've been prone to leave me. So you've got to follow his word. You see, Scripture says our hearts are healed by his word. Our hearts are healed by his word. The heart is deceitful among all things, Jeremiah says beyond cure who can understand it i the lord search the heart and examine the mind to reward each person according to their conduct according to what their deeds deserve these deeds deserve proverbs says as a water reflects a face so a man's heart reflects the man man's heart Proverbs put it in another way it says above all else guard your heart for it is a wellspring of life this heart that's full of evil from childhood this heart that is prone to wander this heart that is full of evil above all else guard it Above all else, stop smoking. Above all else, get your, back to the illustration of my dad, get your exercise, eat right. Above all else, guard your heart. It is the, out of your heart, I don't know if you know tonight, heart quits, you quit. Ding, ding, ding. 
above all else, guard your heart. It is the wellspring of life. I'll never forget visiting one of my farmer friends. He became one of my best friends. We were walking along some equipment, and he was explaining to me some of the stuff that was going on. And over here, he, he had this, this pipe coming up. It was flowing into a trough and out of the trough into a ditch. And I said, what, what about this water? He said, oh, it's good water. Taste it. Cold water. I said, where do you turn it on at? You don't turn it on. It's an artesian well. It just flows constantly right out of the aquifer. I thought, I like that cows never had to wonder about where the water is coming out of that artesian well all the time every time I think of that verse I think of Mr. Woodtill and his farming operation and I, I think of that artesian well but it guards your heart it's the wellspring it's the artesian life it's the wellspring of life guard your heart for it's the wellspring of life. So how does God cure our hearts? If our hearts are full of evil all the time, if your heart is being your God, how does, how does God cure our hearts? I hope you've got your listening got out because I just want us to spend a few minutes this morning in the, in the throne room of God. I want us just to spend a few minutes before God, you before him, I, me before him. And the Bible says that God examines the condition of a man's heart. A cardiologist may examine your heart physically, but God wants to examine your heart this morning in my heart. It's full of evil all the time, the Bible says. Every one of us are prone to wander and leave the God that we love. Who may ascend to the hill of the Lord? Who may enter his presence and ascend to the holy place? He who has clean hands and a what? Pure heart. The actions of his life, the work of his hands, the thoughts, the attitude, and the motivations of a man's heart. Who does not lift up a soul to an idol or swear by what is false? You know, all week long our hearts have been pounded, have they not? By the world, by the things of the world, by the evils of the world, by the distractions of things pulling us away from the God that we love. All week long. Not only that, our own flesh that is prone to wander, and our own flesh that is just just full of evil and our thoughts on evil. David said, God, would you search me? Would you search me, O God, and know my heart? Would you test me? Know my anxious thoughts? Would you see if there's any wicked way any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. So this morning, I'd just like for you to bow your head and you see on your listening guide, there are just some bullets there. And it's just an opportunity for you to say, God, in my heart, what's, what's not pleasing to you? And you can just Allow, God's going to bring some things to your to your mind, to your to your life, to your week, to the evil, to the hatefulness, to the lack of love, the lack of priorities, whatever the the feelings you have that are not pleasing to Him for someone else. He's going to bring those things to your mind. Would you just jot them down? Would you let him lead you to the way everlasting? Would you jot those items down and you just give them to him? You pray about those. 
Allow him to take away that heart of stone and give you a renewed heart. Search me, O oh God. Know my heart. See if there's any offensive way in me. And lead me in the way everlasting. The heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure. Who can understand it? I, the Lord, search the heart and examine the mind to reward each person according to their conduct, according to what their deeds deserve. give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I'll remove from you a heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. Will you let him do that this morning. Allow the Spirit of God to deal with you, show you, teach you. Keep praying about what He's revealing to you until your slate is clean. Until you've turned from that. Father, thank you for hearing our prayers this morning. Father, as we sing today, would you speak to us? Would you show us your ways? Father, as we pray for others today, would you hear our prayers? Father, thank you that as we turn to you and draw close to you, you draw close to us. But you're that kind of God. Hear our prayers today. Hear our worship today, and may it be pleasing to your sight. Speak to us. For it is in Christ's name we pray. Amen. If you stand today, be obedient to what God calls you to do. Let's sing together.